Hello, everybody. We are going to get to work on our comma llama here. First, let's just review our objectives for this lesson. So first off, we are going to classify artwork based on different reasons for our preferences so that you can organize pictures into different reasons why you like them. You'll know you've got it when you've sorted pictures of blankets into sections based on your preferences. So start thinking about what kind of blankets you like and why you like them like that. Okay, and we're doing blankets because we're giving our llama a saddle blanket here. You're also going to learn all about commas. You're going to be able to understand how to write with standard English, including when to use commas, so that you can list out instances in which we use commas. As you see here, you'll be listing them here. Your llama will be thinking about all the different ways that you can use commas and when you should use commas. Now, who can raise your hand and tell me what is our vocabulary, um, art vocabulary for this lesson? Okay, if you said fiber art, you are correct. We watched a video at the very beginning of this lesson about fiber art. So who can raise your hand and tell me what's one example of fiber arts? Okay. If you said yarn, uh, if you said sewing, if you said fabric, or if you said string, if you said anything like that, thread, anything like that you are correct those are all fiber arts okay and I will go ahead and read you um, the definition as well it's a type of art using fibers yarn and fabric as a medium to create tactile that just means something that has a feel to it forms and images through surface design weaving which is what we're about to do and construction techniques and who can tell me the name of this artwork here down here we just watched a video about this piece of artwork who can raise your hand and tell me what that artwork is of? Okay. The answer, if you said unicorn in captivity, you are correct. And does anybody know when that piece of artwork was made? Here's a better picture of it. Okay. If you said in medieval times, that is correct. So look at how beautiful that is. We just watched a little video about this beautiful a tapestry artwork so it's essentially just a large blanket not necessarily a blanket you would cuddle up with but a blanket that you would hang up on the wall and what was it made with who can raise your hand and tell me if you said threads that would be correct so they wove threads together to make that beautiful picture just like we're about to do uh, we're about to weave um, to make a little blanket here for our llama so go ahead and you've got your llama. Um, I would like you to get into the red box or the red uh, bucket in the middle of your table and grab another bag of yarn. They're all the same color. All the colors in each bucket are the same. And go ahead and take your ball of yarn out. Okay. And then we're going to get ourselves a piece of yarn. And you might say, oh, how long does my yarn need to be? Well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to put the tail of the yarn, that's the end, next to the ear. And then we're just going to kind of loosely wrap it around our comma llama. So you're just basically drawing a circle around your comma llama with your yarn. And once you have your circle, you can just trim cut the extra ball of yarn off because all we need is that circle so you can cut the ball of yarn free the piece of string from the ball of yarn put your yarn back in the bag and put it away so this is going to be our first string that we're going to weave with okay so i've given you guys some tape so you're going to first tape down the back strings first if you haven't already done that with the tape and what we've made here is called a loom so a loom is something that you weave in so now we're going to weave in our loom to make this a little easier to weave with you're actually going to take your piece of tape and you're going to put the end of the tape on the end of the string the yarn and then you're going to just kind of wrap it around, roll the yarn in the tape. That way it's really 
kind of pointy at the end, as pointy as you can get it. it, doesn't have to be perfect, but we're just wrapping that tape really tightly, as tight as you can get it, there, okay, like that. Now this will be easier to weave with. So we've done weaving before, um, we've woven with fab, uh, paper, we've done paper weaving, so this is the same type of situation just with yarn. So who can raise your hand and tell me what is the pattern that we say when we weave? Who can raise your hand and tell me? Okay, the answer is over, under, over, under, or if you said under, over, under, over, that works too. So let's start at the very tippy top of our llama here. And on this side, you're going to take your string, I'm going to zoom in here. Go ahead and take your weaving string, your color that you just got, that has the tape on it. Sorry, I'm just got a little thread sticking on there. There you go. And everybody go under the first part of your loom on this right side. So we all are going under, and then you have to lift it up a little bit. And then you're going to just slide right on top of this second one here. So we're not going to go under, under, nope. We're going to go under and then over top. So see that? Under, over. So everybody should have under, over. Okay. So we went under this one and over this one. So what are we going to do to the next one? Under. If you said under, good job. Under. And we got to pull it up here. That's why the tape is helpful. It helps us pull it up. And then what about this last one? Do we need to go underneath this one? No. We're going to go over it again. So it's opposite. So you do the opposite for each string. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this not all the way out or anything, just to about here. So you still have a tail that's about a finger. So our tails are pretty much always like a finger long like this. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to poke this back here. We can put it in that little slit up there. And then on the back, we're going to tape this down. Like that. Tape that down. Actually, it's probably better if you tape it to like a piece of the paper versus on the string. There we go, like that. Okay. So now, flip it back over. Okay. And then we're going to go the other way now. We're going to go back over this way. So we went to the left. Now we're going to the right over here. Oh, I was trying to make an R with my hand. It doesn't really work. So, first thing we're going to do is this is now our first string. Now, are we going to go under it or over it? If you said under, you're correct, because we're doing the opposite of the last thing that we did. So the last thing we did was we went over. We can tell by looking up here that last time, this string here, this loom string, last time we went over it, what's the opposite of over is under. So we do the opposite. So under, everybody go under. And then we can pull it gently in there. That looks really good right there. So the next string, are we going to go over it or under it? We're going to go over. You can look up at what you did last time to this string. Last time, what did we do to this string? Last time we went under it. You can tell that we went under. So this time we do the opposite of under, which is over. Okay, so we just go over it. So we don't really have to do anything when we go over. <laughs> Not really any work to going over, just letting it lay there. Now, this next one, last time, what did we do? We went over. So what do we do this time? Under. All right, we actually have to do work when we go under things. If we're going over it, it's really not really much work at all. You just let it lay, you just let it lay there. Okay. Like that. So you want it to lay kind of flat. So you don't want to pull it to where this string is making a corner. 
You just want it to be nice and gentle so it's flat like that. So it's snug but not tight. Snug but not tight. All right, and let's do this next one. So for this last green one, last time what did we do? Under. So this time what do we do? Over. Okay. And then if yours is down here like this, you need to actually go ahead and push it up like that. Okay. All right, let's do the next row together. So we're going to go, last time we went over, so this time we're going to go under so go under and now we're going back to the left so we went to the left then we went to the right now we're going back to the left pull it through nice and snug but not tight okay so we just went under didn't we so what are we doing now over we don't have to do much work when we go over do we so what's the next one under so go under Okay, does that look good? Is this line done? The line's not done because why? Yeah, we need to push it up to make the actual blanket. Okay. All right, and then you just keep on doing that. So last time we went under, over, or yeah, so this right here is the last thing we did. We went over. So this time we're going under. And then over. Then under. Then over. Okay. Under, over, under. So once you get the hang of it, you can go a little faster. Under, over, under. You don't want to skip any. So when I say, oh, you skipped one, if I say that, that means that you went underneath twice or you went over twice. We don't want to do that. I'll show you what it looks like if you accidentally go over twice or underneath twice. Look, that's not, no bueno. This is not what it should look like. Let me show you what happens if you go over the whole thing. Look, that's no bueno either. You have to go opposite every single time. You can't get lazy. So over, under, over, under. Push it up. Under, over, under, over. Push it up. Under, over, under, over. Push it up. And I'm just kind of fluffing up the top a little bit so it goes closer to the back. So it looks like it's really hanging over. That's a pretty. Under, over, under, over. Okay, maybe one more. Under, over, under, over. Okay. So once it's about halfway down, like that, yeah, I'm going to fluff it up like this. Then we need to be done. So what you're going to do is you can... What we can do is we're going to go one more, under, over, under, over. Okay. Once you're going over, then you're going to just go underneath your blanket, underneath your whole blanket, like this. And then I'm just going to bring it up to this little tick mark, this little snip that we did at the beginning. Okay. So I went underneath my whole blanket to the other side, to the left over here. And then I'm going to just poke it through, kind of.
kind of floss like we said we talked about these being kind of like teeth so you just kind of floss that tooth there now it's on the back okay then you can snip it because our tail we like our tail to be about a finger long and then tape it down like so there you go and then you can kind of pull it a little bit to get it to be what you want it to look like but there we go now he's got a little blanket on his back it's super cute okay so that's it for this video thank you for watching